Hi, I'm Mass Barnkop and welcome to Kaiser Power Electronics. This will be the fourth video about the Kaiser Power Wall solar panel, the Victron 750 watt solar setup. This is the conclusion video and unfortunately also the closure video. Uh, the, uh, the setup here has been running for two to three months now, something uh, along those lines. And it has not fully uh, lived up to my expectations uh, about how much power I can take out of the system. Uh, because this system is so small that I can only draw a small amount of power when I want to run something 24-7. And that's about 100 watt an hour and I really needed at least 500 watt an hour. So just expanding this system to that capacity is just too expensive. This is built entirely from parts looking away from the battery charger, that I got cheap, used or free in some sort of way. So uh, let's take a look at the efficiency, the power generated, all those uh, nice numbers, and uh, we'll see uh, how much uh, the setup could actually produce in two to three months. So now with the shielding of the uh, enclosure, we can take a look at the uh, status for the power used here. Now I have the uh, 230 volt AC power meter sitting here. That reads out 1735 kilowatt hours. And um, if we just connect up to the uh, battery charger here, and we go into the history section, we can see that since the reset, it has produced 230 kilowatt hours. Now, um, the, um, the power um, reading of the, the meter when this was uh, reset the last time was 1564 kilowatt hours, which means that um, I have used 171 kilowatt hours on the 230 volt AC side. So now we can actually calculate the efficiency of charging the batteries and also converting the 24 volt DC into 230 volt AC. And that only gives me an efficiency of 80%. I did predict a uh, 85% uh, efficiency, purely based on uh, yeah, the efficiency on charging on uh, flooded LED cells. But uh, if we do take into account that the batteries right now are fully charged, and we say we can pull another 4 kilowatt hours out of them, uh, we get an efficiency of 82%. Uh, so that actually leaves the inverter to only have taken up uh, a uh, somewhere around yeah 3 3% three to th 3 to 4% um, of the uh, of the losses so overall the efficiency lands near predicted um, but the main issue here is still that as you can see here on the uh, day daily yield that uh, if we look back from today 1.66 kilowatt hours it was 2.4 2.07, 1.95, then 3.23, and so on. And here we have some uh, gray days, only clouded. And we have some super sunny days when we go back and the yield is way over uh, 4 kilowatt hours. So the, the problem is really when you want to run a 24-7 load that you need um, a way bigger overhead uh, to uh, to supply the, the power than uh, than a small setup like that this, like this can do. This is a perfect setup for uh, somewhere where you don't have mains uh, supply for a summer house or something like that, where where you just need some uh, lights and maybe a TV and uh, yeah maybe a router or something like that for wireless internet connection. But actually, power use this is only for short time. Um, I can run 500 watt an hour for maybe 5-6 hours, then I have uh, pulled the battery voltage down to 22 volts. And once uh, I cut out the power use and we go back into uh, yeah almost resting state, the batteries will go back up to yeah, around 24 volt DC or just below. So that still leaves about 40% um, charge left on the batteries that I really can't use when I'm pulling such a high a high load of the system. So um, expanding this to my use would mean that I would have to at least quadruple my battery capacity 
and but that will still leave me with a problem that I do not have enough solar cells to actually charge them if uh, if I had run into a few days without sun. I took a few screenshots from the Victron app and I would like to do a small walkthrough of uh, these screenshots. First up here we have the two month that I ran the whole setup for. And as we can see the average um, yeah the average um, production uh, yeah, that lies around two and a half, two to two and a half uh, kilowatt hours per day. And as you can see, that really does vary a lot. Um, we see the white is uh, when we run normal bulk, uh, bulking on the battery. Then the uh, semi, um, semi blue is the absorption. And then we have floating uh, as the most blue color on top of the columns. And as we see here, on when we get over to uh, May, um, from 10th to the 12th, we can really see that three days without really good sun leaves uh, us with less than one kilowatt hour produced per day, and that is one of the problems. And this is even during summer, so imagine doing this during winter with a lot of uh, bad days with snow and such. So this really demonstrates um, how much variance you see each day when running a solar setup. The next uh, set of screenshots I would like to show is uh, here we have the startup. As you can see at the clock at the uh, left top, this is from nine in the morning and it's uh, taking over a good 49 minutes. So here we can see that uh, while the solar panels are facing south, uh, as the sun rises from the east and moves over uh, in the more southern direction, you can see how the uh, input uh, or the output from the solar panels uh, rises up from 130, or around 100, 150 watt, um, up to 250 watt uh, an hour over the course of 49 minutes. You can also see how uh, small clouds uh, interfere with the uh, production and you have uh, some dips here and there. Uh, we will take a closer look at the three screenshots of different clouds and see how those affect the battery charging uh, voltage. Now uh, another screenshot here is uh, when putting a load online. Here we can see at the start of the uh, cycle the battery is um, only charging 100 and, uh, yeah, what's that, 150 watt again. This is again taken in the morning at the early sun. And uh, I put a load online at only a 100 watt uh, draw from the battery and we can see the battery voltage dropping pretty dram dramatically from above 24 volts to less than 24 volts at first. So we, we actually um, put a quite heavy load on the battery despite not being that heavy after all considering the battery bank was 150 amp hours. The third and the last set of screenshots uh, shows the situations where clouds will interfere with the whole charging cycle. Uh, as you charge uh, lead cell batteries, you really need a uh, absorption period, uh, a bulking period, absorption period and floating period in order to avoid sulfurization of your batteries and literally destroy, destroy them over time. So here on the first screenshot, we can see that um, some clouds doing the floating or uh, I, I think this is absorption due to the high voltage up to 28 volts. But we can see how the clouds actually makes the charging voltage drop down to uh, floating voltage. So this might actually ruin the battery and I'm not quite sure that the charging controller is that perfect uh, doing situations like this. But uh, let's take a look at the um, next example here. This is uh, done over the course of six minutes. Um, and here we have a cloud that lasts for a good two minutes or maybe half clouded because as we can see the, uh, the production does not drop below 274 um, watts. So that's still pretty decent. Um, but as we can see the battery voltage uh, drops down to 26 volts and takes a good two minutes again to uh, climb up to the uh, full charging voltage that it was running at before the clouds passed uh, on by. Now the last screenshot here is a uh, one minute shot um, and this cloud lasted for a good while longer and as you can see this is really a very heavy cloud that really blocked out the sun. We go from very high production just shy of 500 watts and uh, as you can see the voltage very quickly drops down to uh, 
yeah around 60 percent charged uh, despite it is right in the afternoon where it's running its uh, bulk cycle so this is not that uh, bad in terms of uh, battery charging the whole bulk period can jump a little bit a little bit more up and down in the uh, charging voltage it gets a little more um, yeah, severe and critical when we come to the absorption and floating uh, period where the charging cycle has to end correctly in order to yeah, take care of your batteries. So that was the conclusion. We looked at the numbers. We saw what power it produced, what I could spend on uh, yeah, mining cryptocurrencies. Um, and yeah, however, that was a little bit. That was uh, certainly a better mining Monero coin than a Dogecoin. So that was an uh, improvement. But um, the closure that I talked about is that I'm now taking this setup apart and selling all the bits and pieces. That's a, yeah, it's a little sad because free energy from the, the sun is uh, always nice to have. have a, having a free power budget um, is, is not that bad at all. And uh, I also miss seeing where Victron would uh, actually take this, uh, take this app and how much more data and trends and uh, such they would uh, yeah, pull out of this uh, little piece of equipment. So, so far I really do recommend the uh, Victron uh, charger with the Bluetooth and uh, app connectivity. That has really exceeded my expectations. So yeah, onwards to new projects. So thank you for following this project. This is the fourth and the last video about this setup. Who knows what comes in the future. So until next time, see ya.